My name is Travis Moorhead, and I am the executive director of Three Rivers Land Trust. Um, I want to introduce a few folks to you. If you see folks walking around in a black shirt that's similar to this, uh, they're the staff. So I'm going to call them out real quick. So Crystal Cockman, she's our director of conservation. Tiffany Dorn is our administrative assistant helping to film. Mikey Nye is the associate director. Steely Russell in the back is our uh, membership associate. And we have Brian in the blue shirt. He is our uh, Western Regional Director. Um, I also want to let folks know that um, there's some important people in the audience. Uh, a lot of folks in the audience have sweat equity into this, so I want to recognize them. If you're a, uh, you are a trailblazer, David Kraft's crew, Mary Jones crew, if you would raise your hand. Jim's Jim, thank you. <laughs> Projects like this wouldn't happen without volunteers like David and Jim and Mary Joan Kim. pushing. Yep. I'm sorry, I didn't. And Kim. And Kim. Yep. Uh, they're the ones that actually built the trail. Our section of trail that we're actually dedicated the opening to is across the road. It's a beautiful section of trail that the volunteers built after the acquisition, and it will eventually connect uh, all 40 miles of the Uari Trail again. There's a map up here that we can walk you through and show you how important this section is that we're standing on, the section that's across the road, but lastly, the, the last eight-tenths of a mile gap is what we're waiting on um, and trying to work with property owners, willing property owners to do that. I also want to recognize Terry Savory from the Forest Service and Chris, uh, the Interim District Ranger. Appreciate you coming out from the Uaris. Um, and I think that covers most folks um, that I know that are here. So what I want to do is uh, tell you how much we appreciate your support of Three Rivers Land Trust, of our conservation work. This is the culmination of five years of owning this property uh, and transferring it probably several years prior to that. None of this would be possible without Crystal Cockman, the Director of Conservation. So, direct... <laughs> Crystal is a, uh, a former uh, Uari Trail champion, um, mm -hmm. and she also has been around on the staff for about 15 years. She is our bread and butter uh, when we come to doing conservation projects, and uh, we don't get things done if it doesn't go through Crystal. So, she is uh, the heartbeat of what we do, and we just appreciate your efforts, Crystal, here. Um, it's great to work with the staff. It's great to work with good partners. Um, but this project wouldn't happen without, without funding. And, and we're so happy to have uh, folks here from the federal government. We have uh, Senator Burr's represent, field representative, uh, Mike Finley. And we also have uh, Congressman Buzz field representative, uh, Sam Schumacher. They're both here. They were both instrumental, uh, Senator Burr, uh, in supporting the Great American Outdoors Act, which fully funded Land and Water Conservation Fund. Mm -hmm. Woo it makes projects like this possible. And I know that some folks out west and down in Louisiana weren't really happy about that, but uh, we could use all that money that uh, is collected in offshore gas and oil leases to come back to be put to use to expand our recreational lands here uh, in the Uaris and in the nation. So that's what this land comes from. It's not a tax base. It's, it's, it's a gas and oil lease, and it's just so important that it gets put to good use like this project. Uh, with that being said, I haven't missed anybody. Um, we're so thankful again that you're here. I want to introduce my boss, um, Mike Mabry, the president uh, of the Three Rivers Board of Directors, and let him say a few words. Mike. So everything I'm going to share with you right now, uh, I had to learn from Crystal. Because <laughs> Crystal's been involved with this project for 15 years. And uh, we, my wife and I, we put our daughter on a plane today to go to Chicago. And so her stress level was, was pretty high. So we came out here, walked in the woods uh, before the event, and now she's feeling pretty good and calm over there. Um, so it just reminds you of how important it is that we do uh, maintain uh, these wonderful places to get outdoors and, uh, and really connect with nature and what it does for you from a spiritual standpoint. So it's, it's, it's really, uh, thank you all uh, for the work that you've done to make uh, this possible for all of us. The tenacity of this project is what struck me when I started learning about it. This has been 20 years in the making, uh, putting the URA trail back together. Uh, I guess Joe Moffitt founded it, uh, and, and he had a handshake with, with all the, you know, it was always public and, and private lands. He had a handshake that the trail would be passable. Well, over time, uh, five properties decided that or five sections decided that it would no longer be open. So this work has involved 20 years of putting that back together and over 800 acres being donated back to the Forest Service 
uh, to make this trail. So one section left is all we got. So I just want to applaud that group that's been so tenacious about keeping this going over that length of time. There aren't many projects that I've ever been involved with that span 20 years and, and, and could keep going over that long. So that just speaks to the how committed the people are uh, that were involved in all this. And I'm, I'm so thankful uh, for them. So today we're here for the Sykes property uh, to, to dedicate that. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I, my, like I said, my wife and I walked up there uh, earlier and uh, just how beautiful it is, how peaceful it is, how, uh, how it just helps regenerate your soul when you walk through a piece of land like that. So my thanks to all of you uh, for the work you've done. Uh, and we were talking earlier uh, it's a little sad uh, in today's world. I'm so thankful to be out here right now involved in this that we couldn't get more press out here today. But there was nothing, no riots, no COVID to talk about. <laughs> so it's just really awesome to be out here today to be talking about something so uplifting and powerful uh, that you have made possible. So thank you so much. Uh, with that, Travis, I'll turn it back to you. I want to introduce Mike Finley. Mike has uh, been a a good field rep for, for Senator Burry. He's been in contact. We've talked on numerous occasions. He's been very supportive. Uh, his office has always been open to our phone calls about conservation related issues as well as Senator Burr. So I want to introduce to you uh, Mike Finley from Senator Burr's office. Thank you and uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, Senator Burr was elected to Congress in 1994 and was sworn in in January of 1995 and shortly after being sworn in he recognized the importance of the land and water conservation fund that fund was established in 1965 and since its establishment over 42,000 projects nationwide have been funded through that now the original legislation called for it to be funded at a rate of 900 million dollars but it's never a year but it's never been funded at that level uh, until recently and uh, every two years it was having to be reauthorized by the Congress so it was constant battle and Senator Burr took it up as a personal challenge to change that and last year introduced legislation and it was passed and signed into law that made LWCF permanent it doesn't have to go through any further reauthorization and this year, as part of the Great American Outdoors Act, the funding stream was also made permanent and set at the $900 million that this project deserves. It is America's most successful conservation project. And it's not just a conservation project, it's an economic development project. Because the people that come here from far and wide to use these trails and to explore this beautiful terrain will spend time in Denton or Ashboro or Lexington or some of the surrounding communities and visit some other trails and other facilities like the North Carolina Zoo. Uh, North Carolina has received over 85 million dollars from LWCF since its inception and that number is just going nowhere but up. Uh, just out of curiosity, Randolph County, anybody know how much in Randolph County? two and a quarter million dollars into parks in Randolph County, about 10 projects funded by LWCF. Uh, these funds come through the state, but they come to local governments, they come to people like Three Rivers, they come to county governments and community groups, and all in the name of preserving land and creating recreational activities. So, uh, I haven't talked to Senator Burr directly about this, but I feel like he has uh, quite a sense of accomplishment in his work on making this permanent and s establishing the permanent funding stream. It's one of those pieces of legislation that will be uh, very hard to reverse. Uh, it does affect every community and every county and every state in this country. and it. Uh, it does some amazing work. So we're pleased that it happened. We're pleased that this section is being added to the Uari Trail and we look forward to the, to the last almost a mile being added in the not too distant future. 
uh, and and we would continue to work to create recreational areas to uh, preserve hunting lands and watersheds and and provide habitats for wildlife uh, and endangered species around this country thank you very much on behalf of senator Burke. The last person I want to recognize is Sam Schumann from uh, Congressman Bud's office. Congressman Bud's a lifetime sportsman, uh, and uh, Sam reminded me that his uh, his brother actually is on the, uh, the Wildlife Resources Commission here in North Carolina. And so, uh, with no further ado, uh, Sam. Thank you, Travis, for the introduction. Thank you for the work uh, that y'all do. Uh, I'm Sam Schumann, and I'm the field representative uh, for Congressman Ted Bud, my boss proudly supported the Great American Outdoors Act, um, really was a no-brainer for him, uh, clearly understood the importance uh, both economically um, and from a tourism perspective that this will have for the state. Um, you know, the deferred uh, park maintenance backlog, obviously a huge deal, um, and the provisions within the Great American Outdoors Act um, will truly um, help to address that for years to come. Thank you for the invitation, and if there's anything that we can ever do to be helpful, please don't hesitate to reach out. We have one more addition. We have Stephanie Blair from Senator Tills. We have both uh, U.S. Senators' office here today. We're blessed with that. So, again, uh, thank you for coming. So, Stephanie, turn it over to you. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. I was just telling Travis, so we have, of course, different field reps on our staff, and I know he's used to dealing with James Estes in our office. I think something that's so wonderful about uh, specifically here in the Huari is that it goes and it expands through so many different counties and different areas so i don't get to be in this area too much in the uri but with this area in randolph glad that i get to come out today um of course i do bring regards from senator tillis and know that he wishes that if his schedule had permitted that he could be here on his own of course i think I want to thank Mike. He gave you a lot of that great background there on um, some of that previous background and history. And I think this is actually wonderful timing as well that it was just recently that the Great Americans Outdoors Act signed passed, passed in law. I mean, that's amazing. That backlog, North Carolina's backlog, it's of... Uh, it's going to help clear $459 million of that maintenance backlog. Um, and that is something, of course, that Senator Tillis is very concerned about and very passionate about. He himself is an outdoorsman, like spend time when he has it to go mountain biking, things like that. But in particular, um, Senator Tillis has said that North Carolina is home to some of the most beautiful national parks, including the Great Smoky Mountains and the Blue Ridge Parkway. He was proud to have sponsored this particular piece of bipartisan legislation and get it signed into law so we can preserve our parks and allow our kids and grandkids to adjoin them in their best form. And I'd like to add a little caveat to that. I think we had perfect timing as well that we are not being graced by any rain at this time. So <laughs> That's lucky, right, but glad that I could be here today on behalf of Senator Tillis. Please don't hesitate to reach out to Senator Tillis's office, any of your other congressional offices, if we can ever be of assistance. So thank y'all. Okay, we're going to do the proverbial ribbon cutting, and I know that nobody will know who we are with masks on, but I will ask you that uh, if you want to participate and you feel comfortable being in close proximity, um, then come on this side of the fence. We're going to ask if, if the reps uh, from the elected officials offices feel comfortable to please participate um, and uh, ask for uh, Chris and Terry, you guys, if you feel comfortable, come over. If you don't, I understand. There's no harm, no foul. And... Uh, We'll ask Mike, maybe the poor president, and Crystal needs to come over too and, and get in the photo, and we'll get this thing opened up. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming. And, uh, Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. We'll look forward to the next one. Yes, sir. That's right. The last one, I hope. That's right. The last section. Yeah.